Right now, as we speak, there's this absolutely explosive, high-stakes race for the future of artificial intelligence. And this isn't just about who builds the coolest tech. It's a competition for global supremacy, and it's going to define the next era of our world. So that's the million-dollar question, right? Who's actually going to win this thing? Is it a straight-up sprint to the finish line, or is this more of a marathon with some surprise contenders we haven't even thought of? Well, it looks like there are three major players already making big moves on the board. And what's so fascinating is that each one has a completely radically different playbook. So let's dive in and break down their game plans. All right, first up, we have the United States, and their strategy is personified by this surprise alliance between two of the biggest names in tech you could possibly imagine. This whole story is about market forces and some very, very pragmatic deal making. I want you to just think about this one number for a second, $20 billion. That's how much Google pays Apple every single year just to be the default search engine on your iPhone. And that one massive payment, well, it's the foundation for their unexpected partnership in AI. So here's the deal. Apple is teaming up with Google to give Siri a complete brain transplant using Google's powerful Gemini AI. The code name for the project is World Knowledge Answers, and the goal is to make Siri a true answer engine, not just something that points you to a web search. Keep an eye out for it around spring 2026. But you might be asking, why Google? Here's a little inside baseball for you. Apple's early tests actually showed that a rival AI, Anthropic's Claude, performed better. But here's the catch. Anthropic wanted over a billion and a half dollars a year. So in the end, Apple made a very pragmatic business call. They went with a cost-effective choice that was already built on that huge existing partnership. And honestly, this move is classic Apple. It's their entire MO. And Tim Cook summed it up perfectly himself. They know they're playing catch-up in the AI game, but their strategy has never been about being first. It's about showing up, maybe a little late to the party, and creating the product that defines the entire category for everyone else. Okay, so take everything we just talked about, market forces, corporate deals, and flip it completely on its head. Our second competitor, China, has a totally different approach. We're talking about a top-down national strategy that's all about building an entire generation of AI natives from the ground up. And the scale here is just mind-boggling. As of September 2025, China has rolled out mandatory AI education for over 200 million students. We're talking from first grade all the way through high school. This isn't some elective or an after-school club. This is the core curriculum. And the way they've structured it is pretty genius. It's this graduated approach. You know, first graders start simple just by learning to recognize AI and things like a smart speaker. Fast forward to middle school and they're learning entire AI workflows. By the time they're in high school, they're literally designing and building their own AI systems. It's a long-term play for total AI fluency. So why this massive all-in push? Well, this quote from venture capitalist Mark Andreessen really nails it. He called it AI's Sputnik moment. And what prompted that? A Chinese startup called DeepSeek developed a world-class AI model for pennies on the dollar. We're talking a tiny fraction of what US companies spend. It was a huge wake-up call for Silicon Valley. And you can see the results of this national focus right here. It is working big time. China now accounts for over 40% of all global AI research attention. They're dominating in patents. The data is pretty clear. Their centralized, long-game strategy is paying off in a huge way. So we've seen the market-driven US model and the state-controlled Chinese model. But what if there was a third way, a different path altogether? Well, there is. Player number three is Switzerland, and they're entering the race with a radically different philosophy, a privacy-first, open-source challenger that's built entirely on public trust. So what on earth does open source AI even mean? Well, it's pretty simple. It means everything, the code, the data it was trained on, the architecture, it's all publicly available for anyone to look at and inspect. It's the exact opposite of a black box system. The entire point is to build trust through total transparency. And you can see this philosophy in action just by looking at the data they used for their model, Apertus. Unlike the big tech models that are overwhelmingly English, a full 40% of its data is from other languages, including really underrepresented ones like Romanche. It's designed from day one to be inclusive. And if you look at its core features, it's basically a checklist for trust and transparency. It's developed by public institutions. It's compliant with all the strict European data laws. It was even trained on a carbon neutral supercomputer. And here's the kicker. 
it lets any organization run the model on their own servers, which means they keep total control over their data. Okay, let's take a quick breath. We've just looked at three incredibly different paths into the future of AI. We've got the Pragmatic Alliance, the National Mandate, and the Open Collaboration. Let's put them all side by side and really see what this race is all about. When you lay it all out like this, the fundamental differences just pop. The US model, it's all driven by market dominance, and its core value is convenience. China's model is driven by geopolitical power, and its core value is control. And then you have Switzerland, driven by public trust, with a core value of transparency. These aren't just business strategies. These are competing visions for the future. So, at the end of the day, maybe this isn't about one country winning the race and planting a flag. Maybe the real outcome is how these competing ideas, convenience versus control versus transparency, are going to clash and combine to define what AI looks like for every single one of us. And that really leaves us with one final big question. When it comes to the artificial intelligence that's gonna shape your life, which future do you want? The one that's the most convenient, the one that's the most controlled, or the one that's the most open and collaborative?